Hi everyone, I'm Gift, a software developer, advocate, and content creator. And in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you what I would do differently if I was to learn how to code all over again. As someone who has been working as a developer for a while now, I had the opportunity to reflect on my learning journey and also figure out the best approach that has worked for me. So if I was to start all over again from scratch, here's what I'll do. First and foremost, I'll start off by understanding the fundamentals of web development. This includes HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. These are the core building blocks of the web. I'll start off by going through some online resources that I can find to help me learn the basics of these technologies. I would avoid getting stuck in tutorial hell. I'll give myself the grace to actually practice what I'm learning by building small projects on the side while learning these technologies, right? That way I'm not stuck in tutorial hell and I don't find myself just reading up tutorials, taking courses without actually having anything to show for the knowledge that I've gained. The next thing I'll do after this is I'll focus on one specific language and learn it deeply. In my case, JavaScript. When I started, I was jumping all over the place, right? I started learning jQuery, I switched to PHP, I learned Laravel, and then I came all the way back to learning JavaScript. Now, I could have avoided all the merry-go-round of you know, switching from one language to another if I just made a decision from the start that I want to learn JavaScript and then stick to it till the end, right? So um, if I were to start all over again, I'll just speak a specific language, try to learn as much as I can. And when I feel very comfortable with the language, and of course, while doing this, avoiding tutorial hell, I will then move on to learn a web development framework. I'll pick one programming language that I probably will be using in, on the job if I already have a job or if I'm looking for a job the most sought after framework in my area and in my location right for most people that would be react for some people that might be Vue or angular so make sure you find this out um, before moving on and then after picking a web framework I would try as much as I can to also build full application using the frameworks that I'm learning. So if I'm learning Vue, for example, I'll try to build a front-end application from scratch using HTML, CSS, and Vue, and also try to consume APIs, you know, beautiful application that I can actually put in my portfolio and say, oh, I built this using this technology. As I progress on my journey, learn the industry standards for building front-end application, whether that is how to write tests, how to deploy your applications, continuous integration, continuous deployment, and all of that stuff. I would also make sure that I learn Git properly. Git here is a version control system that allows you to manage your source code files. It also allows you to collaborate with other developers on the same project. Now, at the time, I learned Git through contributing to a friend's project. I spent a lot of time figuring out what a pull request is. If I had spent time before that trying to learn Git, then it wouldn't be so difficult for me to understand the concept of pull requests, push, commits, and all of that stuff. So what I would have done differently is focus on learning, taking a course about Git, for example, before actually jumping into using it. One more thing that I would recommend and I've done over the last couple of years is utilizing Google more often. Google is your best friend. Did you hear what I said? Google is your best friend, right? For everything that you have to figure out, the first thing you should actually do is try to Google it. If you don't find it, then ask someone else for help. But if you're not first trying to Google it, I don't know what you're doing. You should utilize Google for searching for answers to your problems, for finding ideas, for finding answers. I don't even know what I would do without Google at this point. And then there is Google's bigger brother. There's ChatGPT now for people learning how to code. You can utilize ChatGPT a lot. I use it for a lot of different things at this time, but you can also use it while you're learning how to code. You can use it to understand core concepts that is difficult for you to grasp. You can use it to figure out why your code is not working. You can use it to learn deep technical knowledge about a specific thing. For example, if you're trying to know why do you actually need to use routers in React, you can ask ChatGPT and it will give you a very detailed answer to that question. So Google and ChatGPT, as long as it is still free, are tools you should rely 
on solely for answers to your questions. Finally, I would seek out opportunities to work on real world projects and also get practical experience. This could be either through internships, volunteer work or open source. Now, at the time, I was already doing open source, even without knowing that I was doing open source. And then I had an internship that I was doing. This could be for you right now. You might be figuring, trying to figure out, oh, how do I actually get the experience that I need to land my first job? You could try either of these um, options that I've shared with you. For me personally, it really helped me. It helped me gain, you know, real life experience, real world experience. It also helped me apply all the things that I've been learning into a real world project. And because I'm working with other people on this project, I was able to get direct help and mentorship from them. So those are all the steps that I would take if I was to learn to code all over again. Well, at the time, it wasn't this streamlined, it wasn't this straightforward. I had to do like my own research, figure out what was working, what wasn't working, try something new, try something different. But now that I'm thinking about it and reflecting on my own learning journey, I wish I had a roadmap from the beginning. A roadmap in this case would have helped me make from the get-go my informed decision on what I should be learning. So for example, if I had a front-end developer roadmap, I would know that, oh, after learning HTML, CSS, this is the next thing I should be learning. And then after learning that, this is the next thing I should be learning. So if I had a roadmap at the time, it would have informed my decisions on the technologies and the things that I spend my time learning. But now, there are so many roadmaps out there that you can actually utilize to help you make informed decisions as you start out your journey. And I'm excited to share some of them with you. Two of them that I'm sharing are from my friends. And these people are amazing at what they do. They've actually put in the work to help new beginners like yourself find your path into software engineering or DevOps as it is. The first roadmap I'd like to share with you is from my friend, Cathy France. Cathy has made a software engineering roadmap that will take you from zero to hero, literally. And he has broken down the steps that you should take if you're trying to become either a front-end, back-end, full-stack developer. So I'm going to leave the links to the roadmap in the description. You should definitely check it out. And the most important part of it is what is free. It's literally free for you to use. So you should definitely be using his um, roadmap. Then the second one I also want to share this doesn't apply to me if I was to learn all over again because I, I'm taking a different route. I'm taking a front-end developer route. But I also know that people watching this video are not all front-end developers. Some of you are interested in doing cloud development. Some of you are interested in doing DevOps. That's why I'm excited to share a DevOps roadmap from my friend Adora Wondo. She has put together this study guide slash roadmap that would help you walk through your journey to becoming a DevOps engineer. So if this is also something you're interested in, I would also leave the links in the description so you check out either of these roadmaps. And again, Adora has made this free for you to use. So by all means, use it and also say thank you to them um, because this is massive knowledge that people could charge for actually, but they are making it free for you to use. So I hope that this video was helpful for you. Let me know in the comment section if you like have similar experience like myself learning and if any of these tips would apply to your current journey if you're starting to learn um, to code. Thank you so much for watching and please don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you all in my next one. Bye.